Okay, so now I want to show you um, how we can use the water level uh, to create a contour berm or contour berm and basin, contour swale, um, by finding the level line across the slope. Uh, we'll also see how we can use the, the water level to determine where we want to set the overflow for a boomerang berm. And finally, we'll use it to figure out the three key elevations of a rain garden. So, uh, Jill and I want to see if we're level with one another. So we can first eyeball it. And uh, so I typically will place my stake where I want the, uh, the berm of the contour berm or the contour berm and basin to begin. Perhaps I want a, a raised pathway going through here. So that's where I'd start it, okay? And uh, that way the berm serves two functions, it harvests water and uh, will also be a raised pathway. Okay, um, so we've got our line scuff. Now what I want to do is dig out the soil on the upslope side of the line and put it on the downslope side. That way we work with gravity, move the heavy stuff down slope. Okay? And uh, so I'm digging on the upslope side of the line and I'm placing the dirt on the downslope side of the line. Uh, now, this is just a conceptual demonstration, but I typically want my berms to be at least 12 inches tall. And uh, really like it if they're at least uh, 18 to 24 inches wide. That way they've got some good mass to them and they're much less likely to, uh, to erode or blow out in a storm. The, uh, the other real key thing that's going on here is we purposely started this thing. That's the top of our watershed, okay? Right at that cliff base. We're, um, we're assuming that at the top of this cliff, the water's being caught so it's not running off. So we're starting as close to the top of the watershed as we can. If we started at the bottom, this little structure would likely blow out because it would be too big a surface area draining water to it, okay? So key that you start at the top, so you can start with uh, smaller, simpler structures. Okay, so, once we've got our basic berm, it's really key that we compact it down. It makes it look nicer, it's more stable. You can pack it down your feet too if you want. Good to do the same thing to the basin. This way it's real gradual. There's not an ankle spraining. It's, no, it's less likely that you'll sprain an ankle. backside of the berm, create my sponge where the water is going to accumulate, okay? And uh, this will catch water but also organic matter. And I would plant alongside within or on the berm. As far as what I plant where, the more water tolerant species go in the bottom. It can be inundated with water and sediment. The stuff needs better drainage, that's up here or that's here. Where the roots access the water but they're not at the low point so they don't get uh, drowned at all. Okay, this works great, but notice that we just stopped it. You know, we just stopped it on our line. Now, we could continue this contour swale or contour berm and basin all along the contour for a good distance. We're just gonna stop here for now. So the key thing is we wanna make sure we kick this part of the berm up slope on both sides. So if we get a rain, it doesn't just collect behind here and then run out, because what's the point of that? We're trying to catch the water, okay? So, um, we'll just take this berm here, and we'll kick it up slope. If I need a little extra dirt, make sure I take that from up slope of the structure, so I make a basin up slope of the structure, 
increasing the capacity of the structure at the same time. Whenever I need soil to make a berm, I want to see where else on site do I need to make a basin. And if I'm making a basin somewhere and generating soil, I want to see, well, where on site do I need soil for, say, a raised pathway, a raised driveway, or a berm. That way, anytime I'm moving dirt, I'm serving at least two functions. A lot more efficient that way. Okay? And, uh, and we're good. Now the last part, and Jill, this is where you can come back with the, uh, the level. I want to make sure that uh, if this thing overflows, it's going to overflow around the edge, not over the middle. Okay? I'm going to hold my stick here on top of the berm. Now I want to make sure if this fills up with water, it doesn't overflow this way. I want it to go around the edge. Okay? So Jill, if you could hold your stick right here, take a measurement. Okay, so take our fingers off, we read each other. I got about 18. Jill has 20, so she's considerably higher than me, two inches higher than me. So I want to make sure that that is the spillway. Okay? So Jill, if you could just hold this for a sec, step back for a moment. So I can take off this part of the basin the berm rather. And we take that dirt we're digging out to put on top of the berm so we're raising it. At the same time we're lowering, lowering that. If I could have the stick pins roll, thank you. And then we pack this down. So until right here. So this water is going to back up, overflow this way. So we want it right where the water would be overflowing. The water will not overflow over the berms. So we don't measure here. We measure there where the water will flow. Okay. So I've got 21. Awesome. Jill's got 17. I got 21. We have a four inch difference. That's what I want, a minimum four inch difference. Um, so, th and there's one other thing I want to check. I want to make sure that the bottom of our basin is at least four inches lower than that overflow spillway. We're getting into the three key elevations. So she holds it there. I hold this here in the bottom of the basin. Let's see what I got. Okay, so I've got uh, 17, more or less. Jill's got 21, sweet, we made it. All right, so I'm four inches lower at the low point than she is at the overflow spillway. Meaning, the water's gonna fill up four inches here before it overflows. We have a minimum four inches of storage capacity. And then, the key thing is that overflow level, this is at least four inches lower than here. So that is the overflow spillway. And that's key, because we want the water to overflow where we want it to. If it were to overflow here, we could create another berm, hold this lead to, right here. So that overflow water would be caught in the structure here. So we're slowing, spreading, and sinking the flow of water. This one could fill up and then overflow to one down there, okay? So we're capturing it from the very top all the way to the bottom.